Hey, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Woodpreneur Podcast. This is your host, Steve. Today's guest is John Mahoney of Mahoney Woodworks. How you doing, John? Hey, I'm doing well, Steve. Thanks for having me today. Uh, well, I'm excited to talk to you because um, on just our, our little chat before we hit record, you kind of, you were giving me an update on where you're at. So why don't you tell me, um, just tell me a little bit about your background and, and, and where are you in business at this point? Uh, I've been, I've been woodworking for about 15 years, um, just on my own time. And, uh, that was just, um, you know, aside from work. Um, but I do have a contracting business and, um, that's what I've been doing. So I've used my tools for contracting uh as some fun projects on the side uh and that's been for you know 15 years now um but in the last eight years i've really been getting a little bit more specific in fine-tuning my woodworking and uh want to make a product that's marketable and uh i'm currently in the process of transitioning from my contracting business uh and taking my woodworking passion and turning it into a business and creating a customer base great and your stuff uh it looks like you well i guess before that tell me what kind of work did you do what kind of contracting work did you do what kind of project uh pretty much general contracting um so from electrical to tile work um more specifically i did uh custom cabinetry and carpentry um i was really fortunate to meet a few interior decorators in my area who would kind of general contract and have the vision for a room they would present me with the information and i would kind of turn their vision into a physical product for them that's great and then um and then what happened what happened that makes you want uh, want to transition? Well, when uh, COVID hit, it was kind of whole world was in disarray. Uh, and my business certainly slowed down just because people with uh, inviting people into their home and, you know, just the uh, fear factor of it and the safety precautions. Um, I had an assistant working with me and I um, wasn't able to really support him in the way that I wanted to. So I, you know, parted ways and, and I said, I really want you to, you know, blossom and this is not the time with me. So during that transition, I was able to work from my home and focus on my woodworking. And uh, I started in Instagram and uh, met a lot of people in the community and my page took off pretty well. I, I get a lot of followers. Um, I've had some transactions and um, my wife uh, has given me the opportunity and my family to support me. And uh, over the next few months, I'm going to work on exclusively uh, doing some woodworking for my house and trying to uh, turn it into um, a, a means of income and uh, reach out with the community and uh, make it a lifestyle. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm going through your account. Um, I love how you uh, like definitely focus on the product and your photography is on point. And you use James Mathias's, uh, uh Pocono Table Company sauce and bomb. He's a friend and a, and a client Absolutely. as well. Um, so tell me what, what do you think your, the challenge is moving forward? Like what's, what's, so as you, as you, and cause I, you know, I've, I've, I've probably done this maybe two or three times where I just turn an, an actual episode into a coaching call to add value just to the community and add value to yourself. Um, cause you are, um, you're still, you're still very new in this space. And so I, I want to, I want to be able to help you and serve you and at the same time serve the woodpreneur community. So why don't you tell me like what's, what's the challenge right now? What do you think you need to, um, uh, how, how can I help you grow your business? Well, um, I guess from, from a, a starting off standpoint, I'm actually very fortunate uh, compared to other um, people who are trying to do woodworking from home. I have a, a shop, which is a garage, but uh, number one rule in here is no cars allowed. Um, I have that. Um, I also have a lot of tools that I use for my business in which tools are expensive. So from a woodworking standpoint to get started, I have a space to work in and I have the tools to work with. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm already ahead of the game. Um, but um, so now my focus is to, I can create a product. I have a certain skill set. A lot of people seem to be taking to my style and product. Uh, now I'm just focusing on creating a customer base 
and uh, getting a word of mouth um, and uh, more specifically commissioned pieces because as it stands right now, all the products that you're seeing, I'm paying for myself and making without a buyer on hand. And um, a lot of it uh, is expensive. Each project is taken 20, 30 hours and uh, maybe a hundred dollars in material. So it really does add up. So getting that customer base is really what I'm focusing on right now. What, uh, and so you are in Philadelphia, correct? Yes, yeah, right. So I guess one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about is that you're in a major city and you have a very good advantage there, um, uh, you know, to be able to, to serve folks in, in that area. Um, tell me what, um, what have you been doing right now in order to, to um, so I guess if you were to sum, sum up the challenges that you need to develop a customer base and you need to increase sales, correct? That's right. Okay. Um, what are you currently doing now in order to get, do that? Well, the past few months, um, since about July, I've been focusing on doing uh, craft shows and uh, really see, for, for people to feel and handle the product in person to see it as opposed to a picture where um, many customers are not woodworkers. So for them to put something into scale is really tough. So I want them to be able to feel the product and interact with it. And um, so for the past few months, I've been looking for uh, indoor shows. And like you said, my area is very prevalent with that. Um, the problem that I'm finding is that it's too prevalent. <laughs> um, many of the uh, shows are completely full and I'm talking uh, like uh, we have the Oaks Convention Center, which can hold thousands of vendors. And uh, they have a craft show coming up. They have three of them coming up and they're all indoor, which is really nice because um, my products I'd like to have indoors um, and they're full. And, uh, and I've also have had a little bit of issues getting contacted back. Uh, about signing up for vendors. They seem to be, a lot of these places seem to be grandfathered in with people with um, annual spots. So um, that's one of the hurdles that I'm working on, but um, I think that would be uh, the one of the best things as opposed to a social media platform is to really get out there, interact with the community and um, get a local customer base. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you, and, and so have you done those so far? I have done one. And um, okay. it wasn't wasn't a craft show. It was a flea market. So the consumers there, um, the the budget was a it's a different class. They were looking for certain things at a flea market as opposed to a craft show where you're getting a little more handmade, high end. Um, but I did well. I I, uh, I sold a few products and um, I got quite a few followers on Instagram from it. A lot of people were very happy to see that I was using locally sourced lumber and um, the products. Um, so th that was neat and I'd love to uh, continue that. So in addition to me working on my projects endlessly and uh, dealing with family life, I'm also trying to um, you know, find these uh, shows to travel to. Yeah, you know, the, um, okay, so, so the, there's a the crowd. What else are you doing or planning to do? Um, well, um, because I was having, not was having, but, um, because I'm not getting the sales volume that I would like on my products, uh, each time I release a product on Instagram, I usually post something like once a week because that's how long it takes me to make a project. Um, I really get a, a good reception, a lot of makers out there and a lot of people, they give me great praise. And, um, with that reception, you know, I was kind of like, okay, I'm getting a lot of looks and likes and comments uh but the product hasn't sold and yeah. so what i'm wondering is what i put together was most of my clientele are woodworkers and you know they're very inspired i get a lot of um, positive inspirational things how people like my style so what i'm planning on doing is uh appealing to them and I'm currently making one of the products that I make that's pretty unique is um, ep epoxy boxes. Um, most of the people in the resin world, um, the, the language is interesting. They call themselves resin artists or, or yeah. woodworkers. But most of them are kind of making a board. They're sanding it. They might put some handles on it, call it a charcuterie board, they make coasters. Uh, but taking that board and applying some more advanced woodworking skills hasn't met the new age of resin worker yet. Well, be, me being a more traditional woodworker, I have those skill sets. So um, I think when I release a box, people are really wowed by it, how it takes shape and there's a, a dimension to it. So what I'm currently working on is a full video tutorial of me going through the process of choosing the lumber, doing the epoxy, taking a board and creating a product 
um, that's much more visually appealing than maybe a flat serving board. So uh, that will be a paid tutorial. I'm working on it now. It'll have dimensions. It'll be, I'm going to be speaking as if you're in my shop with me working. It'll be slow yeah. paced. I'm working on maybe 30, 40 minute video, almost like an episode that I think people will get so much knowledge. And once they see that, there'll be so many tips and tricks that I've paid dearly for over the years in expensive um, mistakes that uh, they won't make or they may learn from. So uh, I'm working on that right now. And uh, I have a, a large backing in the maker community who are very supportive of it. Cool. All right. Well, I guess maybe I, the question is, like, if you were to look at the next three months, what do you, what do you want to happen? Like, what do you want? Well, the next three months, like are, I, tell me, tell me how much, like, you know, how much product do you want to sell? What type of product, how much do you want to make, you know? Hmm. Well, those are, I didn't really think about those questions, Steve. So I'm giving you absolute honest answers here. The next sure. few months, what I've been seeing is a lot of people on Instagram, uh, not even in the, um, the community that I'm involved with, but they're starting to post Christmas sales and really pushing that vibe. So um, from yeah. what I understand, the season's been pretty slow for a lot of people who make handmade products. And what I'm hoping is because I haven't made too many sales throughout the course of the year, I have a hell of an inventory. So I'm hoping that um, me having the physical on-hand product um, will really push people to get a, a little bit more of a premium product or uh, the gift giving season. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to be releasing my tutorial before then. So I'm hoping that uh, a lot of people would consider purchasing my tutorial as a Christmas gift for their spouse or something like that. It's not going to be an expensive tutorial. I have a price point, maybe around 25 or $30. Um, and that's going to give um, hundreds of dollars of insight. So the value is certainly there. So over the next few months, I do plan on moving some of my physical inventory, uh, getting my tutorial out. And um, yeah, those are the two things I'm focusing on. Um, those are first and then third, I'm gonna be trying to get one of the last seats available at maybe some local craft shows before the uh, gift seat. Okay, okay, cool. So I have, I have some feedback and it's gonna be um, a little bit counterintuitive to what you're currently doing. And I'll tell you why. So one is there's, you know, there's this, uh, I guess one is like, social proof and building a community is super important for networking. But I always think when I tell people, when it comes to focusing on Instagram, what do you want the outcome to be? Is it building a community of makers? Cause like you can get a lot of followers of makers or do you want customers? Right. And so one of them pays you, the other one does not Right. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I have a very big uh, sort of issue or challenge about making products and not having a customer for them, right? Like that's, that's like a thing, unless you are, um, unless you are, uh, unless you have just like an audience and, and you're taking them through the process, right? And so I see a lot of, on your Instagram about, um, about the finished product but I don't see, I don't see the process. And that to me is, is, uh, is, is where I would love for you to start documenting the process a little bit more. You are in, you know, I don't know, top 15 top, I don't know what Philadelphia is in terms of, you know, city size, but you know, uh, Philadelphia, uh, size in the country, right? Like it is, I, I think know. it's maybe eight populous. It's probably eight, right? So let's just say you live in a top 10. You should have enough. There's enough business in there to keep you like busy and occupied, right? And so oh, yeah. your stuff is really nice. And so I would come up with the bottom number. Like how much is, are your boards? Your bottom line, your base, your lowest board, how much? Uh, probably about 120. Okay. So... I like that, especially if you can batch make those, but I would get your price point up to 200, period, mm -hmm. right? Like, just because you know, you make, you, make, uh, you make five or six of them throughout the week, and if you can get them up to, you know, a certain price point, you're bringing like a thousand bucks a week, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's one thing. Bring your price point up, right? And... To show your face and your process more on your social. And then I'm going to give you something that's going to make you money now. 
<laughs> and that is, I just went to Redfin. You know about redfin.com? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went to Redfin and I just put in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right? And you can sort by uh, open houses this weekend, right? So I would make a list of 10 different open houses this weekend, bring three to five different boards, walk up to the realtor, make sure that it's the realtor and say, hey, do you need closing gifts? Hey, do you need Christmas gifts for your top clients this year? I will give you a great price. And if you could have like a cheap board that you can, that looks good, that you can give them right then and there, like, like, you know, that, that would be even better. So you give away 10 boards or, or, or five boards and say, I'd love to give you closing gifts for this, for this holiday season. Right. Mm -hmm. And because they work it <laughs> with other, uh, with other realtors, there's like the network effect right then and there. When I think about like, and then there's like personalization, right? So like, if you had a laser engraver or that's a good piece of thing, especially if you're gonna focus on, on charcuterie boards, right? Like if you, could, if you could focus on the personalization, but like that's one amazing thing that you could do right now in order for you to, uh, in order for you to grow your business. You need to go out and talk to people and, and like your stuff is beautiful. And so I'm, I'm sorting at like, so I just, I just did a, a sort by places that have open houses. And then I did the minimum of the house is, you know, let's say 400,000 and no max, right? So mm -hmm. there's, there's 14 houses that have been on the market. Uh, there's 14, 14 homes over there, over $400,000 that have open houses this weekend, right? And so that's 14 different high end, I'm just calling it high end, even if you wanted to make it 500,000, right? Let's say 500,000 is the minimum, right? So that's, so now you're looking at like, you know, an $800,000 house, a six hundred thousand dollar house, like so. That to me is like that's a high end realtor right there, right? Sure. I would go to him, and your stuff looks high end. So you're like, listen, I make high end serving boards, and I um and I would love to provide you with closing gifts. And so these people, they probably sell like a couple homes, uh. A, a, a month right so like sure. imagine if you have that times 10 you're probably selling like 30 boards a month yeah that 30, would be 30 times 150 like 200 mm -hmm. or even 20 boards times 200 that's six grand right there mm -hmm. so that's that's that so that's one thing that you could do um this weekend right like just take a couple boards or you know pull up your phone, bring a couple boards, bring three boards, and then show people the rest of your other boards. Like, hey, I'd love to follow up with you. Can I get your card? Because then at that point, then you're talking to like a buyer and not a tire kicker. And so like, I've done this myself. So I, I launched a, um, uh, uh, like, like a pop-up charcuterie board brand. Um, and the goal was to make 10 grand but we ended up moving too soon away from a shop and everything. I ended up making a little bit more than five grand in like two months, right? Mm. So with this same exact approach, actually, I, I'm going to give you another, another example, which is what I did. I did not do this one, but I did give this to another client out in, um, in Colorado and, and it's working for them, right? So this is, this is one strategy, right? Closing gifts for realtors. The second thing that you can do is leverage your, so you have kids, right? I have one daughter. Okay, how, how old? Nine. Okay, so that's, 
So are you pretty involved in, in the community, like your area, local community? Um, uh, not like public. school, sports, like school. scouting, um, you know, whatever. I don't know. Just yeah. like, so is, a, is it, say that again. There are a few things that I do um, with the Boy Scouts and with my daughter's dance. So um, okay. I'm, I'm helping out with those things. And, and that network group has been um, pretty nice. I mean, I'm getting, I'm not getting customers, but I'm getting a lot of people interested. So potential Great. customers. But your first idea was wonderful, Steve, because um, that hits right on the head of me not being able to get physically into the shows where you're you're giving me a situation where I can go and I don't need to have an invitation. You're, be, just... you're being proactive and going out. OK. Yeah. And then the, the second thing that you can do is you can um, leverage your and, and many people. I, I say this. If you listen to the podcast, I probably mentioned this every other episode. Right is to use your personal Facebook page to do this. And there's a strategy in which I do. So the thing about the, the thing about Instagram and you've grown quite a bit. So you hit like a lucky streak with your Instagram and the algorithm. And so you're growing quite a bit, right? With your Instagram. Yeah. A lot of people aren't so lucky, right? <laughs> and so that's why I tell them to to leverage their personal Facebook page, not a business page, but your personal Facebook page. And what you want to be known as on your personal Facebook page. So like if, if on your Instagram page, you show your finished products, right? One of the things that I would do is use your personal Facebook page and, you know, at school drop off, right? Like I literally did the same exact thing. And I was able to bring in my first, the first month, I think it was like 1800 second month. It was, it was, it, I, I, I generated quite a bit of money, but it was literally by sharing with people what I was doing and being honest and vulnerable with them. So I'd get on, I took a picture and be like, or I post a video and be like, Hey, this is what I'm working on this week. Um, I'm so excited because I get to work with my hands and, you know, I'm going to say in your terms, like, Hey, you know, really after COVID, I didn't think that I'd be able to find purpose uh, with my tools because I've devoted my career to this. Like, I'm so glad that I'm able to do this. And then you show the process and you show the finished product, right? You add a couple things. And then it's what I call the drop method. And you're like, I'm making my next collection and it's being released on this date, right? And you say, who wants one? And you show your best boards and you're like, I'm dropping my next collection. I'm gonna make three types of boards or two types of boards. I'm only making 20 or I'm only making 30 or I'm only making whatever the number is. And then you say, who wants one? But before you even get to that point, you just need to be more active on your Facebook page so that your, your, the algorithm gets used to seeing and people, and so that's like liking, engaging, commenting on other people's stuff. I'm sure I know for a fact, I know for a fact your neighborhood or your town has their own little Facebook group, their buy, sell Facebook group, right? Join that, join realtors, friend them, friend every single realtor in your area on Instagram and on Facebook, right? And, and you do the drop method. So between the realtors and then you do this drop method, by the end of the year, you will, I, I guarantee you'll have at least five, $10,000. I love the idea. I have, so my, um, my thing is, I have to get a Facebook page. <laughs> a personal I, uh, Facebook page? Yeah. In fact, I just started um, a business Facebook page for Mahoney Woodworks um, just a few weeks ago. Um, Instagram, I've, I've, I've stayed off social media um, forever. I've had Instagram was my first account last year. I'm 35 years old. So uh, I'm still playing the catch up game on that. So I have yeah, the woodwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be fun. Like you get to, you know, 
you'll you'll start connecting with people that you haven't seen in a long time, which is going to be awesome because it'll be like brand new, right? Like you can, especially because a lot of people are jaded from social media. A lot of people are jaded, but if you're brand new, it's completely, it's, it's actually amazing. It's the devil, but it's amazing, right? Like it's, you know what I mean? And so I, I, I truly believe that if you start connecting with it, like there was a guy, uh, 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 Mick and Sin Creations, shout out to uh, Mike and Cindy in Texas. He listened to this on the podcast. He literally listened to what I'm giving you. And he's made about, uh, he's, he's doing more now, but he was like in the past month doing what I said you did using the social, using Facebook. He was like, I made about, you know, three or $4,000. Yeah, that's great. Same exact, same exact thing. So I would join Facebook today, become friends with everybody, position yourself as a, you know, woodworker and a craftsman and an artisan and an artist and connect with every single one of your daughter's friends, families, like their mom and dad and all the people on, you know what I mean? And just like connecting, engage with them. Like what you want is like, you want to be able to position yourself as the most popular woodworker and serving and charcuterie board maker in greater Philadelphia, period. That's the, like, you make luxury cutting boards in greater Philadelphia. And if people want yours, they're going to have to either wait or they're going to have to pay a lot of money. I like the sound of it. <laughs> That's how you got to position yourself. There's a, there's, I just gave you two, two ideas. And those are, those are the things that like, uh, there's many, many more, but that will get you started. Um, how do you feel about that? Which one kind of resonates with you more? Which one do you think you can take action on, you know, today? Uh, the open house for sure. Um, I've always been hesitant to do the Facebook. Um, I'm already engulfed with Instagram. I'm getting, 50 to 100 messages a day. I'm on there for hours. And I yeah. feel like if Facebook, that would certainly consume a lot of my time as well. Um, but, um, you know, be, getting getting a physical person, uh, I interact better one-on-one uh, -on -one and with people uh, trying to keep up on a digital platform with uh, people I haven't seen in 20 years um, would be a little tough, tougher for me. Um, but I absolutely love um, the idea of uh, making a physical presence and showing up. Uh, it's certainly a Philadelphia attitude to show up in somebody's business and say, hey, look at my business. <laughs> so um, that's, that's definitely me. I have no problem doing that. Um, <laughs> and I like that. I think I'm going to, I know I'm going to do that. Um, I like, and, um, and it's perfect because I do have uh, quite a bit of physical things on hand. So, uh, and then being able to show my Instagram, one of the reasons that I don't really show the process videos too much is because um, the area, the, the, the market seems to be flooded in that. I mean, it's, um, I don't know how many videos I've seen of people pouring epoxy into a plastic box and I'm thinking, okay, I've seen it. Um, and I, yeah. I didn't want to, or people with that so I wanted to give them a, a finished product but um but people do like it it's a satisfying thing and I, I don't it's mind it's a satisfying thing yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, well but you know what it's overdone in the woodworking community for woodworkers yeah most of your if the people that are going to buy are not woodworkers right so you need to speak to them you need to really I'm mean, like when I did my pours people would be like oh my god I'm in love like I love that you're doing this this is amazing you know what I mean? Like, because woodwork, you can't, you can't talk to woodworkers. Woodworkers are never going to give you money. They're, they're, they're looking at you because they want to learn. Right? right. And in order for you to make money off of woodworkers, you need to provide a tremendous amount of value and a tremendous, and you've got to come up with something so innovative that it, it's like, and so I would stay away from that. You know what I mean? Like you want to make money. You want to be an influencer, right? Like, and once you get to a certain size and a certain level of engagement, maybe think about, but like run a business. And that's, I think that's, that's what you need to focus on. It's like, think, because as you start talking to them, so listen, you, you got to, because the, 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 the realtors, they're going to be busy. Like, Hey, I'm a woodworker. I'm an, or I should say I'm a wood artist, right? Like I'm a wood artist. 
I'd love to provide you with some closing gifts, certain like these. Can I just get your card? I'll follow up with you. I know you're busy trying to sell this house, right? You know what I mean? And especially if, they, if they're selling a $950,000 house, which I see on here, like I would, I would give them a simple board, right? Like come up with like, you know, the Philly, you know, the Philly realtor board, right? Just come up with something simple, maybe a little epoxy in it, just like something that doesn't take a lot of time that you can crank out really fast, right? But if somebody's selling like a million dollar house, you know, like they're gonna wanna give their client because there's a $2 million house here. Like they will spend, you know, three to $500 on a closing gift for their they client. Would. Cause they're, they're gonna get 6% of that or at least if they split it in half, they're gonna get 3% of $2.8 million. That's a lot of money. It sure is. So um, was that good? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was wonderful advice, Steve. I appreciate your insights on that. Um, there's uh, two things I didn't think about, um, especially the Facebook. The Facebook, um, uh, I didn't even put that there. I thought maybe I'll just create my business account, link my Instagram and kind of go from there. But I think having the personal page and doing some process videos, um, people meeting me, I think that's a good opportunity. Uh, you inviting me on this podcast, people are going to see me, interact with me. Um, as far as they know, um, you know, I could just be a, a mass produced shop that posts a picture once a week. So most people don't know that, but it's just a one guy in his shop uh, creating a finished product and working his ass off. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share my story with everybody and especially giving me the insights on some of the business, because ultimately, as much as I like sharing my work, I have to make money sharing my work as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for everything. How can people follow you? Uh, Instagram at Mahoney Woodworks uh, and uh, Facebook at Mahoney Woodworks or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the only two things that I'm uh, working on right now, Instagram is the best way to uh, contact me. I have a link tree set up, set up with an Etsy. I have affiliate links with a few businesses. Um, Starbond Adhesives and Black Diamond have uh, gifted me the opportunity to have affiliate links with their products. So that was very nice of them. And uh, check it out. I have some uh, good products and stay tuned. I have some things coming. I guarantee you've never seen. <laughs>